Hi, welcome to another video. So I've been asked by Saeed if I could make a video on keypads. And it just so happened on top of my fridge freezer I had three of these. So Saeed, here goes. So I've got the same 28 pin microcontroller, 16F886, soldered to the PCB. It's still running the clock, haven't altered anything, just added the eight wires for the keypad. So in case you're not familiar with this particular keypad I'm holding, they call it 4x4 matrix, so 4 rows, 4 columns, gives you a combination of 16 keys, 8 wires brought out the ribbon cable, with a 2.5mm header. So you can use these headers, plug them into there, solder your wires on. I happen to have some of these offset pins, so I'll just use some of them. If you haven't got any headers, just use some component legs. Chop the component legs off, stick them in there, or bits of wire. So that's the keypad I'm using today. About £3 or so off eBay. So I've looked at various examples of keypad libraries on the internet. And they, A, they don't show you how they work, so you won't know how they work. And B, it's difficult to incorporate their libraries into your software and actually get some keys to actually actively do something. So I'll put my own program together and I'll give you a look. So what's going on here, obviously you've got the clock, you've got the title, the clock is still running and I'm leaving this on to emphasize that this clock, this keypad doesn't interfere with the timekeeping. So this little microcontroller can do many many tasks at once. We've got the key down here, so which key I'm going to press. The count because you want to assign the key to an address or assign it to something so that you've got a quantity to work with. Similar to the CAN SPI and the USB with the data coming in you don't, you don't want just one bit of data you want many bits of data store them in a variable so that you can act on them. So this displays 16 characters across each line this happens to be a four line LTD if I give you them. What I've done, I've also tied the keypad program to the clock. So every second it looks at this keyboard, looks to see what's pressed, and then gives you the result down here and starts spelling it out across here. So you have to hold the key down for approximately a second. If I start with number one, that's a key I pressed, see up there. But that's now stored. So if I press another key, it's going to change down here, and you'll see it increment up here. Two, three. My finger's getting in the way. A. Four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. So we've done the A, B, C, D, hash, oh sorry, star, hash. Sixteen characters. So you saw each key change down there. But now we've got 16 characters to work with. 16 characters connected to a count of 16. So now we can look at the counter, look at the key, and differentiate between each character. And what this program does, so once it gets to 16, like the TFT, just reset. Right, and because I've tied this keypad software to the clock, if I hold this number one down, you can see it increments every second. So let's try the letter A. And then a B. And when it gets to 16, reset. So that's it, very effective. Now let me show you some wiring and code. So I'm using the same wiring as the other day for the clock. This is what I had. 
and this is what I've now used. So the clock is still in place and I simply added this keypad over here. Each of these eight lines has got a 4K7 pull down resistor. You could have 4K7 or 10K, something like that. But there's only so many ways to skin a cat. So we've got eight data lines for the 16 pins. Any one time, two of the wires are going to be connected. So one row and one column. So in my code, I simply turn on these first four bits of port A, turn these on, and then port C looks at the value coming back. And only one of these lines is going to be high at any one time. And remember, it's a microcontroller, so it's counting hexadecimal. So if this becomes a one, that'd be a one. If this becomes a one, that'd be a two. Then this would be a four, and that'd be an eight. If we had eight pins, one, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, so it's counting hexadecimal. So a few microseconds later, after we've powered up port A and read these values back, we swap the TRIS register, it's a choice aid, swap the TRIS register and we make these four bits high and sit and wait here, see which one of these becomes a one. And that's it, we've then got our result. Today, again, I programmed it with Microelectronica's MicroC Pro for PIC. I'm not going to go over all the clock routine. If you want to know how the clock works, look at the other video. But I'll just run through the code quickly. So that's the LCD. This is the timer interrupt for the clock. Still got the jars and strings to display the time on the LCD. Now we've got some strings to display the temporary variables on the LCD for this keypad. So I, I was initially displaying the port A and C values but now I'm, display, I'm displaying the temps. This will make sense when you see the code. This is a little love heart in the corner. There are two temporary registers for port A and port C. Right, this void scan keyboard. I'll come back to this in a minute. Right, more chars again, so this is I, that's the char for the heart. This is a short for the counter. So this is the main. So we initialize the timer for the clock. That's the OSCON register. If you're not familiar, look at the other video. This is Tris B. This is making port B digital, turning off the analog bits, initializing the LCD, turn the cursor off, clear the display my titles, the key, bottom left hand corner and the counter, this is the heart, when I turn the system on the temporary register is ASCII 129 which is a space. So this is the wild one and the first thing the program does is show the time. So I'll scroll up to the show time routine. So the show time is essentially the same as the clock you might have seen in the other video. We get the seconds, minutes and hours, convert them to strings and display them on the LCD. But, because we've got the clock, I thought I'll utilize it for the keypad. Every time we get 60 sixtieths, that gives us a second, but, so every second, this program goes to the scan keyboard routine and gives us a flag. So now let me go to the scan keypad routine, which is above this show time. If you're running off to another routine, incidentally, you have to declare it before you ask for it. So I'll scroll up. So remember from the circuit drawing, we power up the columns and then look at the row data. So choose A is an output, and we power up the first four lines, then choose C, inputs, Clear the port C and we look at the data here. So if port C is greater than zero, temp1 equals port C. So temp1 is the row data. Then after that's happened, which is approximately five microseconds, we then swap the TRIS registers. So whereas before port A was an output, we change TRIS A to inputs. So four inputs, clear the port, 
so we haven't got any erroneous data there. Tris C is now an output and we load Tris C with decimal 15 which is powering up the first four pins. And port A, if port A is greater than zero, temp2 equals port A. So temp2 is the column data. So if I press this 2 for example, just add them up, add up port A and port C, this would be column 2 which would have a value of 2 and a row of 1 so that would equal 3 and then down here for the 4 this would be row 2 column 1 so that would also equal 3 so you see why I've done the code in this fashion so in all the code I'm looking at what is the column reading so in this instance it's 1 so I'm reading the first column 1, 4, 7 and star 1, 4, 7 and star so if temp2 is equal to 1 that means it's reading the column number 1 is pressed and then we see which row is pressed so we switch case so if temp1 the port value equals 1 it means the first line has gone up to high then the second line has gone up to high third line and fourth line so what hexadecimal 1, 2, 4 and 8 there's our four inputs and then so that we can display the values on the LCD we convert them to ASCII so temp1 if it was a 1 becomes 49 which is ASCII 1 if it's a 2 temp1 becomes 52 which is a 4 55 is 7 42 is star and then here we're obviously looking at column 2 so somewhere here column 2 is pressed because the column is registering a 2 which means the second line on the column so column 2 equals 2 which row is pressed so again if it's 1 but because we're on column 2 so it's still 1, 2, 4 and 8 we know we're on column 2 which row? So 2, 5, 8 and 0. 2, 5, 8 and 0. Then if temp 4 equals 4, so we know that's 1, 2, 4. So it's registering a 4, which means something in this column has been pressed. So while the column is a 4, we look at the row 1, 2, 4 and 8. And the same again, 3, 6, 9 hash if row 1 ASCII 51 is a 3 6 9 and hash and finally this is obviously column 4 so we've got an 8 being registered in the column and we switch the temp 1 if it equals 1 2 4 8 we've got an A B C or D and they're the ASCII values and then we're back down to the show time. So back to the world one. So you saw the flag generated in the time. So if we've got the flag and the temp one, so the row register is not equal to a space, that's ASCII 129, then we clear the flag, increment the counter. Now this is all in a loop. We display the ASCII character, which is temp1, so that's the row. We're displaying it on row 4, bottom right hand, bottom left hand corner, you remember. Then this is converting the counter to a string, so that's the counter in the right hand corner. But this four line LTD is a bit unique. So um, this is line 3, where it's dis displaying the 16 characters as the counter increments. So you can see line 3 and instead of a column um, I've got the counter variable but this particular LCD 0 on line 3 needs a minus 4 and then that's where I've got temp1 so the row or the data once it's been converted to ASCII and finally because we've now got data locked to a counter I'll show you this code in a minute. So a counter 4, so if the counter is equal to 4 and the temp 1 
which is the converted data, is equal to ASCII 42. Clear the display and display unlock. If the counter is equal to 4 and the temp 1 is equal to 35, clear the display and locked. So you could feasibly connect one of the pins to a solenoid, motor, LED, anything you like. And now you've got a keypad function with code to create a function on your microcontroller. So once all of that's happened, we're then calling the temp1 ASCII 129, which is just an empty space. And down the bottom, same as the TFT, so if we reach 16 characters along the LCD, clear it, and just reprint the titles. So that last piece of code I showed you is looking for when the counter is equal to 4 and the keypad is equal to a certain ASCII character. In the first instance happens to be an asterisk, so I've got that 227 and then asterisk. You can see unlock, although I'm obviously not unlocking anything, but you can see this could be a key code to unlock a save or turn something on, turn something off. That was looking for the star, the asterisk in the fourth position. So now if I carry on pressing that, just to clear the display. All right, so that's cleared. So now if I press, it doesn't matter about the first three characters, it could be anything, but you could set up any amount of characters with the counter, you could have a 16-bit code to unlock a mini box, something like that. So now the second example is looking for a hash. When there was a star or an asterisk in the fourth position, it was unlocked, and then when it saw a hash in the fourth position, it was locked. So that's it, and obviously if it doesn't see that character in that position, nothing's going to happen. So hopefully this video has shown you how to use a keypad and actually put it to some use, not just display a character on an LCD, because that's of no use to, to anyone. It's as useful as a chocolate teapot. Hopefully you found this video useful. Thank you very much.